Hello and welcome everybody to the latest edition of the Buy Round interview show. We're joined today uh, by none other than Joel Thompson. We uh, never actually played together, but we no. did cross paths a number of times. We've got some mutual friends who we uh, likely go into uh, <laughs> a little bit later on. Um but a man that um, had a great career over here in the NRL, finished up at St. Helens, my team, in the Super League, and uh, is now retired. Interesting, interested to hear uh, about your story now and what, what, what you're up to. Yeah. Um, how are you, mate? I'm really good. Thanks for the invite. Uh, pleasure to be here. Like you said, I've played against you over the years. I heard a lot of you, like from the other side, but... Um, yeah, we got our, our mutual friends there. Um, being one big lats, we spoke about before. Um, I'm glad that you've brought oh. them up. I'm glad that you brought them up. <laughs> I didn't even need to bring him out. Uh, yeah. What have you got? What have you got for well, us on lats? Well, see, I've got a lot on lats, and he's got a lot on me. But at the moment, I'm using lats as a bit of a business connector because his networking is unbelievable. He's talking to everyone, so I could absolutely destroy him in a, in his reputation and tell him some some good. Good yarns, but I'm going to have to leave him alone for this period. But get me back because if there's nothing that go, comes from this business thing, I'll come back and, and really open up. Mm, all I, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, mate, I can imagine Lattie's the type of person that would promise the world and deliver an atlas. So I reckon let's just let's fast forward. He brings you nothing. He brings you fuck all. Let's get oh, into mate. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, um, mate, how are you um, in retirement? Because yep. you... You did, um, and there's data to back this up. Yeah, the hardest retirement um, for an NRL player, retiring in England. Yeah, um, with an injury. Yeah, feeling like you've still got more yeah. to give, yeah. and you 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 still had uh, you still had a year left on your contract. Yeah, and COVID. Yeah. So all those three factors yeah. make it very difficult to retire. That everyone that finishes in England then comes back. They they yeah. find it more difficult. Yeah. Anybody that's retired through injury. Yeah. I know you were sort of closer to the end than yeah. the beginning. Yeah. Uh, but anyone that, that feels like they've still got even one more yeah. year, it's crazy. The psyche where you're like, oh, hang on. <laughs> I, you know, I've had a play well that year. I could have gone again. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. So, um, you know, it's disappointing. Uh, like anything, you know, as a, as a, as a kid, you dreamed of the playing NRL and, and the build a career and, um, to go over there, you know, I wanted to give it a red hot crack. Great club, love love St Helens, love what they're about, especially the community St Helens and a real working class environment. And they just live and breathe their rugby league. It, it made it special. And um, obviously, flew over there during COVID, um, absolute chaos. You know, my daughter was actually screaming. We come out of Manchester Airport. It was raining. The rain was hitting our family in the face and my little girl just goes, I hate this place. And my missus just looking at me, just deaf staring at me. But um, from there, you know, we had different challenges too. You know, not just talking and um, going across the other side of the world. You know, we, we had um, Amy's sister that fell ill, um, relapsed with, with cancer, um, which was really tough. You know, obviously going on the other side of the world, and the challenges of then flying back home and all that type of Especially stuff. Especially that time, of that time the, it, it, in that climate yeah. with COVID, you couldn't just you couldn't hop on a flight and go, oh, no. I, I'll throw money at the problem. Yeah. Because like, you can do that you can. normally. You just go, don't worry. Or the club would have taken care of you and said, look, yeah. mate, well. Of course. Yeah. So anyway, I went over there. My body was a little bit busted. I didn't have much skill. Like I was just bash and barge. You know, I got told early in my career, it was by Dave Fernie, you know, work on a passing game and offload. And, did I listen? No, I was just like go out, try and kill people and run as hard as I could. And I built my career off the back of that. Um, went over there, my body was busted, my ankle was just destroyed. It was so stiff. I was already stiff enough, but um, really good club. I wanted to do more. Yeah, I always pride myself on, you know, really working hard, being a team player, doing all those little one percenters, all that type of stuff. And my body was just letting me down. So what happened there? Um, you know, it got me into some other bad behaviours that I've found myself to get in trouble with before you know I started to drink a little bit I started to, like all that type of stuff and I, I just knew it wasn't a good place for me you know as much as I wanted to play footy the best thing for for us and for my family especially for my wife to get home to her sister and you know all that stuff it was best for us to, to, to leave and I went in and I didn't look out for a payout I just shook their hand you know Wolfie and just said mate my, 
I'm letting you down. I'm actually stealing a wage from you guys for what you've got me over here to do. Um, great club, love what you're about, but you know it's probably time for me to retire. And, and it's tough, right, to do that, and especially being a very proud person. And um, but yeah, it was just too many things happening, and I knew if I tried to stick it out and tried to go on, um, like I said, I'd, I probably wouldn't be able to handle it. I would have put too much pressure on myself. I would have probably found myself in other situations where I didn't want to go. Well, it's quite ad, abr, adramo. Why can't I That's say a that tough word, one, eh? Ab- it's quite ab- ab- adramo. <laughs> <laughs> I admire oh. you for your stance. Yes. Okay, let's just say that. Yeah. Because the easy option is to just um, continue on for another year. Yeah. And um, you, you delay the inevitable. Yeah. And your body lets you down even more. Yeah. And you leave the game i think even more bitter because you're not part of it you sat there yeah. watching from the stands yeah the lads are a bit off you because <laughs> you're not yeah. they, they sort of know that you're not there for the right reasons that, so you sort of have a disconnect with the playing group and they they you they last ever teammates in a professional environment 100 percent, and it's disappointing right like if i was over there fully fit hungry and everything else you know, I'll, I'd back myself to spend one, two, three years, no doubt about it. But when your body and you hold yourself to a certain standard, you want to get to that standard every time, even though it might be an okay game by the coach or by the team for your standards and what you know you can deliver and you can't get there, you're filthy, you're burning and, and that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, I just knew it was, it was right, the right thing to do. And, um, you know, in that period I was over there, you know, I got the experience, you know, winning the Challenge Cup. Uh, well, uh, you played at Wembley, didn't you? Mate, like, unbelievable. Oh, that. that was unbelievable. Even like one of my favourite memories in footy out of everything is um, on, a, on a bus, you know, going through or through St. Helens and seeing everyone come out. And, you oh, know, the open top bus, yeah. Mate, it, wasn't, <laughs> <laughs> it blew me away, eh, just the how long we, that went for. Like I went for hours. I was just thousands of people lining the streets and – you, the, the the best part about that ride right, is you know how much the game meant to them and, and and you know and and how much they love St Helens Rugby League Club. So you know that was cool because you know you know what that trophy and what the Talents Cup meant to them, which was was a good experience. How good was the the bus journey back? Did yeah, you, it was did good. you did you spend the night in London or did you come back straight after? We come back. Oh, from London, sorry. Yeah, so you fit, you yeah, play no, at Wembley. London, yeah, do London, and obviously we come back. To but did London. you did you come back on the Sunday? Yeah, we come back on the after the game. Oh, you come straight yeah, back yeah, after so the we game. Had the, oh, so but, everything was back at the club. Yeah, but um, yeah, like again, that that whole that whole experience over there was was so cool, eh? Just the yeah, <laughs> I love it. Like people when I talk about it over there, like real working, but it's a different type of love for the game. Like it, it really is. Like I feel like it's just the. It's like a religion. It's like mm. that's just – and they're so passionate. I remember playing against Wigan, right, and getting off the bus and just the abuse from these little fellas. <laughs> I thought like I could slap these kids. Like, they're, they're, where's their dad? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> man, I used to, man, I used to love that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to and the, Like, especially it being front row. Like, yeah. you're, you're at the back. You, like – that's it's literally you. like me and you. Yeah. Hey, Graham, you ginger <laughs> bastard. You fucking scouts. It's like – yeah. Right, right, yeah. Uh, okay, but, but, but the thing is too that I loved about it is the ref obviously they're letting you come back five. You can do a bit, of, you can do some, you can get away with a lot more too. Mm. And I love that that side of it as well. You know, put the whistle <laughs> away, big fella. Let's go to war here and really rip in. <laughs> <laughs> but as well, you, like mm. it's funny when you when you look back mm. because when, when you got there, like over here. Covid was like, <gasps> if you've got Covid, it's like, oh my god! Because when I was there, when I moved yeah. back before you came, yeah. I got it, and yeah. we had people from like friends from Australia, like, yeah. are you okay? Yeah, like, uh, like reaching out. Yeah, I was like thinking we were gonna go. I know. And then it was still the same when you when you landed in England, you got it pretty quick. Yeah. But then at that time, Australians were very like, oh my god, yeah, I know that you you're done. I went down to the pub to meet the boys, and then we all got it. And I was, and everyone was panicking. Like it was a panic station. Like, oh no way, you've got to go. Like, and obviously, like everyone's yeah, got it. <laughs> whatever, everyone's got yeah. it. Yeah, let's just crack on here. Like, what's the? Mm. And now looking back, what a what a weird time, you know, for for the world, right? The very strange. That. Very strange. Very strange. So th- those mm. factors I- included. Yeah. Um, 
you come back to Australia. How yeah. did you find that an initial um, that initial landing to be? Yeah. Like, okay, I'm I'm back in. Yeah. In the because you moved to the Gold Coast as well, which is even. Yeah. You, you didn't go like no, home. No. You went to a new, you, you'd never played at the Titans or anything before. No, no, I haven't. So what happened, just going back a little bit, um, to get back to Australia, we kept on getting bumped off flights. So they were letting so many people into Australia. So um, after the grand final, I didn't play in the grand final, but after the grand final, we got a government flight because my sister-in-law was quite, quite sick. Uh, we got special uh, a, a seat on um, a government flight, so that was straight from London to Darwin, direct flight. So um, that's the only way for us to get home, and we needed to get home. So um, after the grand final, I couldn't celebrate with the team. Like I couldn't even celebrate. I didn't even want to touch, mix in with anyone because I didn't want to catch COVID. Because if I caught COVID, they test you before you jump on that flight, and obviously if you get positive, oh, we we're, we're stuck there and you know, for another period, for a longer time. So after it, I was like exiting the stadium and I'm just trying to dodge people. People are singing out, Joel Thompson, yeah, get a photo. I was like, I'm, I'm trying not to be rude, but I have to, <laughs> have to go and I look back. So I was just going straight. My missus had my car, had a, had the car parked there. I was just going straight for the car, jumping in and we're going home to isolate so we could get on that government flight home. So that was such a weird time. And, and, and Wolfie had, um, had my ring grand final ring right and um he wanted to give it to me so so weird like we went and met at the park and i was still careful like <laughs> to get the ring just quickly handed to me and <laughs> just so i couldn't get covered before i could fly home but anyway going back flew well, home. Even, even that that's yeah, even that's strange. another complexity or, yeah. or, or or another like because we, we have like in all cultures, yeah. there's ceremony involved with yes. how things often begin, yeah. but especially how things end. Yeah. Like even something like a funeral, that's a ceremony yeah. to celebrate the end of a life. And that's we right. have yeah. within Ruby League, you would have yeah. some form of ceremony that's for correct. most careers to help people transition out. Your ceremony is running out of Old Trafford, Just brushing <laughs> brushing the fans, and then you meet in a park I know, to, to get, get a dodgy ring. 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 And even then I was like, Wolfie, I can't cut yeah. like, all, give Thanks us a for what you've done. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. And, and it, was, it was such a strange time, but we obviously got on the flight, got home, flew into Darwin, um, done our two weeks up there, at one of the camps there, um, got through that, and then went to the Gold Coast because, you know, my friend... Um, Jetty had a company, a railway construction company, had not had a job for me there to come in and do business development. Um, you know, so I, I had a job lined up, went into it, absolutely loved it, and and it was, it was a good transition. You know, I, I went straight into work, a, a, a job that I really loved, you know, it, it was good for me straight away. I'm with one of your mates as well. One of my mates, and helping him build, you know, his company and and seeing the success, you know, that how far how fast it's grown and, and where it's going. It was good to be a part of that and you know, and um yeah, so the transition period was was pretty good for me to come out of forty. Yeah, and you also set up now your own yeah. training company off the back of that yeah, as well. Off the back of that I um I've always been a community person. I've always you know, for a kid that comes from a bush, uh, uh, from the bush, I've always, you know, wanted to help out and, and to um, you know you know, help out where I can in the community. So it was an opportunity for me to start up a registered training organisation, Yakka Training, um, where I can obviously get people in, getting them trained up and helping them build careers. And, you know, with the railway, it's a booming industry. You know, Australia's investment into railway is absolutely massive and people are not aware of that, but there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a shortage there. So there's a lot of opportunities for a lot of people out there to build careers, but also earn some good money to set themselves up and their family. So, so your company based basically yeah. gets them certified to be able to yeah. go and, and apply for yeah that's right for a, so, for a job on on the yeah. lane railroad Ra place. rail yeah pretty much so um you know that can also uh support a lot of these companies and in, in the railway and um yeah i'm loving it yeah i'm early days in i'm understanding what it's all about being a business owner managing you staff. full 100 percent business owner yeah yeah, yeah i nice. am so i've had a red hot crack at it i put on I said, it's, it's time to do it what happened if 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 it goes it's not gonna it's not gonna fail but if it did it's all right i'll i'll, I'll start again and whatever that is but um yeah it's, it's been really good it's been a challenge i'm learning a lot 
um, you know, which which is good. But um, yeah, I, I just understand, you know, the importance of cash flow and getting your people working, making sure your staff are utilized, all that type of stuff. And yeah, it's do good. You, do you think that's helped with your transition out of football, ha- actually having your own little baby to to look after? Yeah, I, I believe rather so. Rather than just like, yeah. oh, I'm just clocking in, clocking out. Yeah, that's right. So I went into, um, you know, to the group and I've just absolutely loved it. You know, I felt like it was it's, it's something that was that suited me, like, you know, going out there, helping build people's careers and really supporting them. And then, you know, we we're using an other RTOs. And I was like, I could probably do this better. You know, we we'll see I was letting we we're letting a lot of staff go, you know, you know, drug and alcohol issues, you know, um, you know, some of the behaviour stuff. And I thought, you know, maybe I could I could build an RTO that can actually help support them too, the non-credited stuff. So, give so when them you say RTO, registered? Registered training organisation yeah. where I can provide the the um, education and support around the mental fitness in the workplace, you know, the drug and alcohol education, financial literacy, teaching people how to save money and, you know, instead of getting their, their cheque and just blowing it, like put a bit of money away and, and buy a car or a house or stuff like that and... I wanted to provide a lot of that wraparound services, not just a certificate. Like a bit like a holistic approach holistic to approach. it. Holistic yeah, approach. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's the way forward. I feel like um, that's why I wanted to do it. I want to do it for the right reasons. I just felt like if I'm going to give someone – I want to actually help them be successful, the thrive, the, the be the best they can be. There's a lot of superstars out there. The other stuff really lets them lets them down. It's not just railways across all different industries, right? And, and that's, So you don't want to create a culture of shift workers that fly in, fly out – don't piss them money. Yeah, just, like like we see it too much. Or waste their money. And I've seen so many superstars like you do in rugby league, right? Some of the most talented people. Absolutely just like I'm taking superstars as in work ethic. They get the job done. They're everything. But what lets them down is after hours and, you know, just like footy sometimes. It's all the stuff around. But sometimes when, they're, when they don't know, how do they be better? You know, it's just providing a bit more education and then – also, you know, guiding them into these as a support out there. Like, try try and go after the big jobs, but you have to sort of make sure you are actually working on yourself to be the best. Yeah, well, and also anybody yeah. in that situation, they need to prepare for that. Exactly. Like, you know, we, we talk a lot about, oh, yeah, I, I want a promotion. Mm. But if you're not ready, like, yeah. are you helping people get ready yeah. to go and – if that promotion yeah. comes available, yeah. you you can step in. We're not going to have to go outside. 100%. We can we'll, we'll give you the tools to build up your CV, build right. up your experience, right. and that's it. Like I, obviously for myself, I'm a house kid. I'm a kid that come from nothing, and you know I know how challenging it is out there when you don't have anyone in the house working, or or how tough it is, you know, in those environments, especially out there. But the opportunities out there to you know, start work and they start to build a career, to earn money, you know, it changes generations, right? They, these kids start to see their mum and dad working, bringing in money. They're going on holidays. They, they're going on excursions. They're doing other things. It changes lives. It really does. And training employment does that. And sometimes people don't get to see that. But I've been very lucky enough to see a lot of the really good stories of people who have just built a career and changed it for their kids and, you know, the kids after that. So, it's very special. It's very re- rewarding, and it's something that I've o- always wanted to do. You know, and and this is what it's, it's a great fit for me. Yeah, and be the be a positive role model, positive to role that model. next generation, ra- yeah. rather than being the the, the, mm. the negative one that unfortunately some people are. And mate, yeah. you know what you you speaking about, um, like tapping into to to, to young people there yeah. and. And, and providing them an opportunity, and some people might go like, "Oh, well, whatever, mate. You, yeah. you just, you know, building roads." But you know what? If you if you uh, um, let, building railroads, yeah. you know what? If you're gonna do that, be the best damn railroad builder that's ever that's been. That's right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you, you, whatever, whether you're a plumber, yeah. a butcher, a baker, can be the be the best that you can be. Yeah. Don't just plod along and, and, and go right. along to get along, like whatever, you know? 100%. And even last week I had a group that come through the youth justice. You know, there's a lot of kids that are disengaged. You know, the the, the, the crime rate's just out of control for the youth at the moment across the country. And had a group come in up at the Brisbane depot there and um, started to show them what life looks like through employment, you know, chasing down, you know, you talk to them, what do you want to achieve? You know, one one kid goes, oh, I just want somewhere to stay. You know, a kid was living on the streets and, and it breaks your heart, you know. It's the lottery of life, right? Some kids and some, you're born into, it's not your fault, you're born into a certain environment and, you know, that's just what life is. 
But, you know, I wanted to make sure he left with the hope and the belief that he can get trained up, he can start employment and he can buy all the things and achieve everything that he he, he knows he, you know, he can dream of. You know, that's what's really important, making them have that belief and the hope that they can be better and not live on the streets and not go through that same vicious cycle that we see. So, um, you know, instead of going out there committing crime, going through that, you know, once they get stuck in that in that system, it's really in that hard. Struggle. It's really hard. It's you a know? struggle, uh, and it's, it's it perpetuates, it's t- and it it's tough, man. And and and, and I'll speak about. It. I've shared it before publicly. You know, I've got two younger brothers um, who are locked up currently. Now they're nineteen, um, and it breaks my heart because. You know, during my career, you get quite selfish. As you know, Jim, you focus on yourself. You've got to sleep well. Hey, you know, you've got to eat a certain food. You've got to do certain, you know, you really you become quite precious in some way. Like I was quite precious. Like I had to have certain <laughs> food. You know, I was a bit of a, uh, yeah, I was a bit of a psycho too around how I had to uh, prepare for games. But, you know, I sort of really was quite selfish and focusing all on me. Now I don't want to deal with, you know, now I have my brothers and they started out through juvie. Now, they're in jail and they they're looking at longer jail sentences and but it's it's going to be even harder now for them to break out of that because they're so intuition wise whatever you know where it's they're so used to that environment um, you know it's now it's a tougher fight for them to get out of it and I want to tell these youth that hey you start now you get some training you get some jobs you change your life and you can go and get whatever you want and, and dream big but we'll also mate as well like. I was going to ask you this yeah. a, a little bit a bit mm. later, but you're um, providing opportunities because yeah. um, how to, to change mm. a, um, a a community that is mm. uh, not thriving. Mm. Like, do you throw money at it, or do you provide? You need to provide opportunity, right? Opportunities, like that's what it comes down to. It's, and a lot. Of, yeah, I could even go deeper on this, but it even starts with trauma. Like some of these kids have seen some of it, and I know that because I've lived it and I've breathed it, and I've had to deal with it myself. You know, some of the things you witness as a kid—that's trauma. That it's not your fault. It wasn't my fault, but it's it's now yours. You have to work on it. If that's getting professional help, if that's putting in things play in place to make sure you. You're addressing it, um, you know. As dealing as, as it gets quite complex, right? It really does. But you know what really is a big, you know, step forward and and a way out of all of that is getting in treatment, finding the purpose, finding a why, getting yourself out of bed and going. You know what? I'm putting on my work boots. I'm going to work. I'm going out to earn some money. I'm coming home, but I'm going to save up for my first car. No one in my ha- no one in my family has ever bought a house. I'm going to work towards buying a house. That's what it does, and it changes. So you, they don't get into these 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 vicious cycles that are even even tougher to break out of. Like my brothers, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be so hard now to break them out of that. No matter how much support, how much you know, help and whatever else, like they need to now. It becomes re- more difficult. It does. So it's achievable. It's achievable, but it it's tough. Certainly makes it it's tough a lot. Uh, increases the degree of difficulty, I, and right? I believe in them. I, I have hope. Yeah, you know, I've been let down. I couldn't even. Get, but anyway, I I know one day I hope that they come to me and go, you know, Joel, I want to get out of this lifestyle. I don't want to be stuck in jail. I don't want to be doing all this type of stuff. You know, can come here. Let's do it. Are you serious enough to do it? Don't let me down again. Like mm. you know, yeah. At some it's stage, a tough on that. Like yeah, how much tough love to apply to people in yeah. You? It is. It it's is. The, it, like, and it's a lot for a person to balance because yeah. when there's blood relation there, yeah, it is. You know, you wanna, yeah. you, you wanna do what you think's right, mm. and sometimes what you, what is actually right, is different to what you think's right. Hundred percent, and that's and that's right. So it's just through the experiences and 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 then you know, I guess a lot of these experiences you learn how to be better and and what is the best way to do things and, um, but yeah, it's just again, um, I believe just providing that. The, having those healthy conversations and just to provide that hope and that hey, there's hope for you to get out of this and there's, there's a better life out there. Like you're 19, you should be traveling the world. You should be going out to nightclubs. You should be, you know, going to bar. Going, you know, you, there's so much more out there. Mm-hmm. Like you know, but um, yeah, I, I still hold a lot of hope there that they'll get out of that. Mm. Well, mm. you are um, a magnificent. I know your mm. story. You're, yeah. you're an example. Of a, a person that, that that changed their life through football, yeah, um, and 
it was no red carpet walk through the NRL um, system mm. and career. <clears throat> Before we go into mm. all all that, like how much work have you had to do on on yourself? Because you know you yeah. met you know you mentioned yeah. it about helping others. Yeah. But what about on on you yourself? Like yeah. how much work do you continue to need yeah. to do? And yeah. and are you at are you are you comfortable now with yeah. with everything with there you're, where yeah. you're at? Because I know yeah. like even myself, it's like yeah, I'm good. But then bad yeah, yeah, week, course, good course, week, and oh, you fall into a trap. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's right. Uh, yeah, I'm mad. I I am mad, and I've always I've been mad since I was a young kid. Like I, I'm built different. I, I think my experiences have built me different in the way I am, and that's just that's just the reality of it. But um, my journey from a young age, you know, you know, moving across New South Wales, you know, through the country and jumping from house to house, and you know, I was very lucky. I had my nan that took me in and raised me, and um, you know, I, I was I was a bit of a rat bag as a kid, you know, in trouble with the with the police and, and different stuff. But I was very lucky to have rugby league. Rugby league did save me in a big way. Um, I went away to a school and um, a boarding school. But for me, the, the the train to play, you know, I had to behave at school. And you know, I was so far back with my education, and every, you know, it was embarrassing. But rugby league really did give me that why and that motivation to be better. You know, I was very lucky then to have Melbourne Storm. Pedro Sullivan, he, he signed me, uh, which was the start of my NRL journey. But during that period, I guess, you know, I got to 18 and I, I guess I had all these experiences as a young kid. I saw a lot and, you know, you, you come, you grow up and I was around some, some, some tough males, some tough men and that old school of like just toughen up, boy. Pick your, pick your, sorry, pick your lip up. Like, no, you know, you had to be that real, you know, that was the environment and, you know, I guess um, when I went to Melbourne, I <laughs> I, um, I got exposed as in I was unfit. I was, you know, mentally weak and I didn't have that um, that toughness into me to train hard and to put in the work. And I went to, out of all the clubs, right, every <laughs> club trains hard, but Melbourne was a different beast for a young kid. From they the have bush. a reputation, <laughs> don't they? Yeah. <laughs> and I still remember, if he's listening, Alex Corvo, the head trainer at the time, strength. I don't know if he's still out there, but... Man, he was hard on me, and but it was the best thing for me in a way. And that's that I, tough love, right? It was a tough love, and I still, if you know, there's no doubt that I'd be probably up there, the top of the worst trainees ever had, like come through. And um, but it was good, you know, all through that, coming through that adversity, being away from everything, discovering nightclubs in Melbourne, like it was, it was, um, mm. yeah, it was, it was good and good and bad for me, but. I guess a lot of the stuff that I never spoke about as a kid because, you know, you, you keep it all bottled up, you keep it to yourself, you're tough, you're all that sort of stuff. Uh, I sort of it crept up on me in a big way and, um, you know, over the years I just sort of got on with it. And But I, I guess I've had an issue and I spoke public about it, publicly about it and around drinking and all that. And, um, you know, I drank a bit. I found myself in different situations at Canberra, um, one where I was, I was stood down and, you know, I was innocent, but I had to. I put myself in that situation. Um, yeah, so I, my behaviour was just a little bit out of control at times. You know, I, I guess I, I was just a boy, a hurt yeah. boy. I, I really was. I was just a hurt boy, and I didn't know how to be better. I just never had that education how to go and speak to someone or do anything like that. I didn't know what was going on. I just knew I was. I, was, you know, it makes me reflect. <laughs> it, mm. It's it's actually um, yeah it's. Yeah, it's, but, but, it's, but now, like, are you, are you comfortable where you're at now? I'm so comfortable where I'm at now. I am so happy and just absolutely loving life in every way. But it's been an absolutely journey. Mm -hmm. I was saying, like, yeah. from those early experiences and what I've been through during my career and working on myself and putting my hand up and speaking to the professionals and, and doing the work on myself, it's got me to a position now in my life where I couldn't, you know, I am so happy. I have the best group of friends around me i've got a loving family i've got you know I, I couldn't love life anymore to be honest but to get to this point i'm saying from that journey from that young hurt boy who um to where i am now it, it took a lot of work it took a lot of looking in the mirror and going you need to be better you get professional help as well yeah i did i did and i wasn't going to but my partner at the time who's my wife now she was my girlfriend at the time she said you need to get some help hey eh? because i was just just out of control, bendering on the drink, just 
like next level just wild and she's like you, you need to get some professional help I'm like I don't, you know and she sort of helped me go on to, to start that journey and you know it was hard like for a, for a man for a young footballer coming through I wanted to prove myself hey to be the toughest and be the maddest and mm. be the biggest drinker and be yeah. the, all that type Where, of, of a badge of honor right? a badge of honor right that's what that's what mm. the respect you get from back then and what a fool I was um but yeah so I went and got that and started the journey of help and I was like if I'm feeling all this and I'm talking like why aren't we speaking about it you know why aren't we you know and that's why I sort of put my hand up and sort of wanted to help others too mm. to, to share that how aware of you uh, sorry how aware are you of the the pitfalls because you you've got to be fully aware right that you you could fall again oh definitely and definitely and and that's the thing i said you when know, I say I, fall, you, you can you, you know what i'm saying right you, you can, can go off fall track. back yeah or deviate deviate yeah, yeah of course so I, i'm very aware of just the you know i'm always well, I don't like saying I'm mad, but it sort of explains it. I am mad. Like I know I can get myself into situations, and it's very hard to pull myself mm. out of it. And you know, and it's embarrassing talk about this, but uh, my wife will have a laugh. But you know, she put things in place like you know, make sure you're home, curfews, like make sure you, you know, just to know to protect me because she knows that I can get carried away if I've got a good crowd and good people around me, and I'm having beers like. It's tough to pull up. Like mm. I've got a personality. It's like, hard to dial it down. It is. It, it is. Like I, refer, I always think about uh, it's. I don't have the dials down. It's like <laughs> someone needs to take the battery pack out, <laughs> and then it's like you know, like I wish I. You see those people and they just go get to a point, and then they just go. Mm, I'm just gonna dial down, and then they just. It's yeah. like dial it up <laughs> and then you blow the circuit yeah. and it's like well that's the thing too like you'd go for a couple of beers where people just go all right i'm going to go home now i'm going to go and have dinner with my family i was i'd say why are you going why are you going harder we're getting red bull vodka because we're ripping yeah. the ice out and we're getting into it like we're mm. going harder and you know i wish i was a bit more like, but i'm not mm. i'm just not like that so anyway i'm I've, I've obviously very aware of that be it self-aware i have to be um, I've got a business now. I've got a family. I've, I have to be better. I've, I've done all the wild stuff for a long period of time. Do you think that's it? Responsibility. It, do, it is. It definitely like is. Business owner. Yeah. Um, family. Well, who yeah. need you? Um, yeah. Don't want to let people down. You know. And I went back to talking about being quite selfish because I was. And you know, you come through. You think you're something as a footy. I'm not speaking about everyone. Um, but I used to think I was the man. Like I thought, you know, I'd go to a nightclub in Canberra. I'm not waiting in the line. I'm walking to the front and I'm getting let in. I want free drinks. I want, you know, I want, I'm the, you know, that ego side of things is just, it was out of control at did times. You, did you get cue jumping free drinks? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I'll, I'll always push it in. Even at the taxi rank at the end of the night, I'd be pushing <laughs> myself and I'd always oh. be getting, and I'd be one of those guys like, who makes him special? If I was out there at the time, I was seeing, if, I was like, hey, who the, f yeah, who do you think, line get back ahead, the line? Yeah. And that many different, like I can speak about it public now because I'm not signed up with it. And the different wrestles and the fights I'd get in taxi ranks and different stuff because I was just an absolute wanker. I really was. I was just a grub. But anyway, I look back and um, again, you, you live and learn. You grow up a bit and you and you reflect on it all. Mm. <laughs> Good times. Um, <clears throat> man, I want well, if no. it, if it's okay. Yeah, take your self back to that that young boy growing up yeah. in um very rural yeah new south wales yeah. i actually had a look on the on the map, map yeah where, where it is yeah and jesus she christ is. Is, <laughs> yeah. you, you are far away yeah she's remote like yeah it is what's yeah. what's it like growing up in a town like how many people are in that town well we used to have the jail they took the jail away so i was dropped the population which is disappointing we used to count them in so oh still, you used to count yeah, them yeah, like, oh yeah they live here yeah they live yeah. here they're part of the but obviously it's um it used to be a thriving town like a railway town a lot of work but it's it's one of those country places that have just slowly died but i've still got my grandmother out there who lives out there and family but um, I was saying I moved around from places like Wagga Wagga, Kondobolin, um, Gundigai, different little country towns, living with different family members. Um, my then took me in out to Ivanhoe. Um, oh, so she was the big – yeah. she was what pulled you there? Yeah, she did, yeah. So she she changed my whole life. We, we talk about moments in your life. That was a big moment for me and 
Um, yeah, and she really taught me a lot around, you know, being respectful and, you know, all those really good things I needed to go forward in life. And, um, yeah, so I went out there, lived with Nan and, you know, and people say, like, Ivan no goat. Is, are you talking about being the greatest of all time, like the Ivan? The, and it's not that at all. The goat, I got that nickname from a friend because goats out there are feral goats who so stink. They, they absolutely, they're just grubs. They're just dirty. They stink. And that's how I got the Ivan no goat. But, it was all those experience of growing up out in the bush, you know, mustering goats, going roo shooting, you know, pigging, all that type of stuff, riding motorbikes. I loved my childhood. I really did. Even through all the chaos and all the shit and all the other rubbish, whatever, like I still enjoyed that experience. and It really did make me who I am and it puts a lot of things in perspective for life for me. You know, the things that you, you take for granted and, and, and that, like that, all that experiences from my childhood really helped me in life. Is there much of a like? Is there a football team there? Yeah, like, there is. I'll so, get onto that. So yeah, so the football team. Because I can't imagine the next town being no, no, particularly no, no, close no, no. by. Like, what are you doing? Like, yeah, so six aside year, every you, week. You, it's like you, you, you know. wouldn't believe this. Say, eh? so this is one. Then asked me. She goes, "Son, could you come and play for I And I said, "Nan, I've just started a business. I live on the Gold Coast. Oh, d- just recently, this year." She asked you to come make, make yeah, yeah, come for, for her, and she put it on me, and I, I love my grandmother. I'm like, man, all right, I'll, it's a it's a big ask. I said I'll try and make so many games. So I was flying from uh, the Gold Coast to Sydney, Sydney to a, get a rural flight out to like Wagga Wagga or Griffith, and then if it's not a hire car, I'll get a family member to drive me then to a game, and then I'll try and get back on Sunday. So I was doing that for a lot of my weekends and. Um, for Ivan and I had like you know eight or nine cousins in the team, um, which younger cousins, which was pretty special, right? And uh, went out there this year. Um, there was so much expectation, like NRL player, he's coming back, he's going to save the day, he's going to do all everything. I think I was thinking I was going to come and set up tries and do everything. I was, you know, I wasn't, I was rubbish. But um, we got through, got to the grand final actually against Narendra. It hurts me actually talking about it. We got beat an extra time. Um, so, you know, all obviously I was paying for all these flights and everything and the commitment and taking time away from my family and leaving the Gold Coast, right, to go out and play bush footy out there. But it was good to see what it did for the community. It really did bring everyone together. It makes you, it shows you what rugby league or what sports does for a community. No matter who you are, what colour you are, what whatever, it brings everyone together and and you see how much it means to especially the kids out there that are watching it and and that's what really made it very special for me to make that commitment and yeah so we lost uh on the grand final she had heard us talking about it but um you know i'm gonna wait for the right time i'll get me missus in a good mood um buy her something nice i'm gonna ask her again if i can play again next oh, year you know, six again next year i, I, I want to have another crack i've got to win it you're gonna win it i can't go out like that like i've got to start get out there and win it. But anyway, um, so you you're playing um, junior football, yeah, football there, yeah. Um, but what's the what's the standard like? Is it like because again, like how many te- like where would the closest no, opposition so, team? So be? I didn't really get the play. The only footy I played, which is funny talking about it, is like, like the local cousins and family and people that were in the community. So it would be all different ages, different sizes. It actually probably toughened me up to play against my older cousins because I used to get ragdolled and absolutely smashed um, and you know because that was all we we couldn't form a team so it was when I went away to boarding school um, where was boarding school at? Uh, it was a place called Forbes Red Bend so I met my real father um, at around the age of 12 13 around that period but um, with his support I got to meet him uh, he got me into a boarding school. He goes, that's probably the best opportunity for you to go and play football. So, and what, what, sorry, uh, if you don't mind <laughs> sorry, me asking, back, just yeah. what, what do you mean by me thinking him? Okay, this is, <laughs> I've shared this before, but my name was actually Joel Murdoch for the first period of my earlier years. Um, I used to believe another guy who, who I still call dad and um, was my dad. As um, So my name was, was Joel Murdoch for until I was whatever age and then um one day i found out that he wasn't my dad um and then yeah i got to meet my real dad and then you know i got to build a relationship with him very yeah as <laughs> thinking about it it's just crazy but then i got to meet him um 
And then with his help and support, he got and my, different people got me into the boarding school, and I got to play rugby league there. And then that's how I got picked up by Melbourne Storm. Yeah. Yeah. So what what's life like um, mm. for a kid from the bush in, going into another extreme and yeah. ex, extreme environment, but very different environment. One hundred percent. I was I was very rough, like rough, rough, like just grow up. I'm not not a uh, like pretend I'm a mad fighter or anything, but you grew up and you had to fight for everything. You you will just that's just the environment. I go to a Catholic boarding school where you pull your socks up, you have your tie straight, you got to go to, like it was a different environment. I felt like I was on a different I was a different world, right? So um, I went there, but it was really good because the discipline, the structure, the all those little things really the routine really helped me. It helped me, you know, I guess improve me as as a person and some of my behaviors and that what needed to to be improved i guess but when i first started there on this little um rough i'll actually share the story you, you will listen to this jetty too like my best mate the first time we ever met each other there were some of the, the kids from the school i went with actually used to call me harry hard nuts and because i used to walk around and i was always just steaming around with my arms out and they said you should they said the jed you should you should fight him you know like you fight him and then we didn't fight we ended up becoming best mates but that's how it all started how we met each other we talk about it now and harry hard nuts. harry harry yes <laughs> harry hard nuts steaming around but but you know that period of going to that school unbelievable a lot of support from the teachers and yeah i'm very lucky yeah uh, and well, would you get to go back home to your nan on weekends or no, holidays not, well sometimes yeah here and there i could like how, but, are you gonna have to pardon the ignorance how far away are yeah, these places? so far away so so far away but sometimes i'd be able to catch a train and, and get back out to ivano but it, it was tough you know it was it was hard but um you know it, i guess it, it was just a a different challenge and a little bit of adversity well everyone's got a unique story but that was a bit of mine of being away from my nan and being away from support and, and but getting there and growing like i feel like you grow through that moments and and to be better for it mm. Mm. you do i i often look back at certain things and mm. i've heard the f phrase like um post traumatic benefits mm. and post traumatic growth like it shapes a lot of people and you got to love it you got to flip that mindset too and i say it when i go to juvies and i talk to these kids okay life's been absolutely tough life yeah, has been, been shit shit hand no one has ever experienced what you've been through but you can never play the victim of like poor me and let this define you as a yes. person or what your life looks like you flip that and go you know what i'm a resilient fucker. i'm i am more resilient than anyone else i've been through this you got to flip the mindset of going hey I'm going to use this as a as something that I believe has made me stronger. Is going to push me in the direction I deserve, and nothing's getting in my way. What's going to stop me? And, and also, mm -hmm. you know how shit things can be. Hundred percent so drive. That's it. Let's go. Whatever. Come my way. Let's yeah. Let's, dri <laughs> let's drive. Some, let's. let's and I've got this internal drive yeah, for something right. different. Yeah, that's right. And something what is I think most people would agree would be better. Yeah, a right. better way of being, not just for themselves, but. Uh, better society in general and that's as well. and, and that's right for anyone out there no matter what you go through use those different challenges and adversity like you just sometimes got to flip that and use that as the experience of like hey that's your drive you, you got something in you you build that resilience yeah, in you game. grow from it you grow from it never ever let anything get in your way or stop mm -hmm. you from being and, you being and the best when you know when you you when you are competing yeah against someone that's been on a red carpet life and not mm. have to deal with hiccups and setbacks or adversity you're just going to eat them alive and Actually, you've got that drive 100%. and you've got that knowing where i've been it's like come on mate like, good luck then let's what, see who, yeah, yeah. let's see who walks out of here yeah, yeah. Let's, oh, not, yeah. let's not talking about it yeah it's not, <laughs> you know it's not I mean? necessarily a fight but no, it, no. Yeah, it's a fight for a job yeah it's all right a fight, a, a fight to, 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 to strive for something that, that's exactly right and people got to people listeners out there remind yourselves of that too whoever is listening mm whoever is listening yeah. jeremy yeah I'm jeremy you. get that fight in you before <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> hey, you've been through a lot lots of <laughs> we're going to take a quick break from the podcast to tell you about ag1 the daily foundational nutritional drink with all your needs in the one place i like to look after my health and ag1 takes care of that for me no more tablets vitamin pills vitamin pills 
all the health nutrition I need all in the one place every single morning. It's as easy. Open up the fridge, scoop of AG1 in a glass, cold water, stir it with a fork, drink it. It tastes great and it helps me know. It gives me the peace of mind that all my nutritional needs are taken care of all in the one drink. It really is as simple as that. And also anybody that knows anything about health benefits knows that it comes with adding simple routines to your day. It's not about magic pills. They're not going to work. AG1 helps me be the best version of myself by having this new habit of every single morning having that drink. I know my nutritional bases are covered thanks to AG1. A lot of athletes are now taking AG1 and with 75 high quality ingredients, it's no wonder why. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then try AG1 and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. That's drinkag1.com forward slash buy round. Check it out. So you moved to yep. to Melbourne Storm, yep. obviously a, a, a real institution there. Yep. Uh, but you you don't go on to play first grade there. No. Was that, um, did, did you leave and move to Canberra because of a lack of opportunities no, or, it wasn't or what all. was behind the, the Re move? Really good club. Uh, I actually went up, got relocated up to play up at Brisbane North's Devils, uh, the feeder club. Uh, went up there. Permanently? Quite, yeah, just went up there and played Q Cup, but they wanted me but to come. Was that one of those feeder clubs? They yeah, just, but you'd fly, fly no, up. No, I didn't fly up, so they just put me up there permanently because they, ah. they had only a certain number down there based out of Storm. Um, so I went up there, played Q Cup, loved it, discovered the nightlife, um, really enjoyed that. You know, I used to go out and play that hard just to make sure I could get a match payment so I could in really enjoy myself on that on the weekend. And um, yeah, great experience. But I, at the time, I felt like it was a bit of my responsibility to go back closer to family. Um, my mum then had my brothers and my little sisters. I felt like I wanted to be closer to family to, to support them a little bit more. So. I uh, reached out to my manager and got me to Canberra Raiders. Yeah, so that was awesome. Yeah, so how close to the family are you? Again, you have yeah. to pardon the ge lack of geographical knowledge. Yeah, so my mum was in Canberra um, at the time, but then, you know, places like Wagga, rural places, Gundigai, Ivano, we're talking, you know, three hours, five hours. Like, it's, it's a lot closer than what... Drive. Yeah, yeah, it's still a long it's time. It's not Next that far for there. country people, you know, like <laughs> them hours are not that far at all. But yeah, I guess it was just a lot closer and closer for them too to come to games and whatever else. Yeah, so the so the the the, the real reason behind moving to Canberra was um, that, that family connection. That family, you wanted I, feel. I wanted to reconnect and, and be close to the family and I felt like I could support them a bit more and be there for them in yeah. a way. Yeah. Did you feel did you feel like that happened? Yes and no. Um, you know, oh, well, how can I put this? Yeah, I had the intentions to, to really, you know, do more, like be, ha, provide more support and just to be around them. But I guess I was just, I, I was still, I was out of control in some ways. Like my priorities then, even as a young 20 year old, 19 year old, no, 20 year old, 21 year old, was drinking, partying, like, you know around that age so earlier on like i was no help to anyone really <laughs> you know i really wasn't i was just out of control my priorities were even you know just just party <laughs> and then that's what it was work so, hard play hard work hard play hard and that was my whole mentality and um you know i used to this is actually quite it was weird the way i used to think but i used to think you know if i party hard on the weekend i'm gonna work that hard during the week i'm gonna play hard on the weekend and, and try and and then I'll just start playing well, and I'll be like, "Yes, this is it works." But <laughs> Did, were you one of them that would punish yourself on a like be first in Monday, yeah, yeah. like like not blow the cobwebs off, but I mean like get after a training session, yeah, do yeah. extras. You'd go out there. I wouldn't do extras. I, I was I was quite lazy, but I'd still train quite hard, and yeah, you know, I was quite intense. Like I didn't have that much skill, and I wasn't a skillful footballer, but I, I was someone that was very competitive and just you know. Wanted to rip in and and that's how I did it, yeah. Yeah, and then 
uh, da- down in Canberra, you you meet your your wife, don't yeah. you? And mm. sort of that changes things a lot. Change your outlook on things. Yeah, she, you know, you, you mentioned did. that yeah. she was um, very influential in you. Yeah. Yeah. Seeking professional help. Yeah, yeah. So I talk about moments in your life, right? And I say my grandmother taking me in was a, was a big moment and where I was going, you know, going to a boarding school. But then my wife, you know, I'm not going to get up and show, but I had a tattoo actually of a of a girlfriend, um, Amy. I had Amy, my one and only true love, across my hip. I had a young love and I got this big tattoo on my hip and I'm talking about how I met my wife and – I was at a nightclub at the time and I was ego, like just, you know, try and, you know, hook up with any girls and, and I was just on the dance floor. I was like, oh, who's this, who's this mad sort? I'm going to go and try and talk to her and went up to her and she, one of her friends like, go away, he's, he's a grub, whatever, just like don't talk to her. I tried to protect her, fair enough. And and then they go, oh, Amy, blah, blah, come. And I was like, Amy, Amy. And I pulled down my pants like, here's this tattoo. I said... We're meant to be. I said, just give me an opportunity, you know, let me try to be. And that's how that's how it sort of started. And then from then, back then, I don't even know, maybe they do have it on Facebook. Back then they had um, Poke, Facebook Poke. We could poke oh, it. yeah. That was a cracker. <laughs> um, so anyway, I found her on Facebook. I tried to take her home, obviously got turned down straight away. And um, But I'm very determined. Got straight on Facebook, tracked her down, started poking her. Um, you know, let me take you for dinner. Yeah, let's let's whatever. Worked pretty hard to, to get that date. Um, took her to an Italian restaurant. Um, never been someone that went to restaurants or um, and I couldn't pronounce. You know, I was I was a bad. I was still a bad reader, but couldn't pronounce what I wanted. I just pointed at something and it was. It was Matt, some, you're not the only one that yeah, does that. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Fetter, was, <laughs> no, that, that that one there. Yeah, and the the guy actually said, "Are you sure?" And I went. Yeah, 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 I want that. And I was embarrassed. Like, I was, I'm, I'm out of my death here. But anyway, I, I come out and I was, I was one of them boards with all different meats. I don't know what, even what they're called now. All different meats and different things. <laughs> and she goes, you, you didn't know what you picked? <laughs> I went, no, I've got no idea. Right? <laughs> but anyway, we... Uh, that's a good idea, man. That's... Uh, yeah. It's sort of... I told this at my wedding too, but that was, I guess, we built a relationship. But she was different, I guess. She, she had a, she's got a really good heart and... She knew more of my story and, you know, I, I was hard work and, you know, I, I did, um, what's the word, you know, she she stuck by my side when really she should have ran, ran and just never looked back and, you know, some of the experiences and situations where she's picked me up from being on benders or being in situations where I've got myself in trouble or different stuff, you know, I said to her actually, I said, We'll never divorce, obviously, we'll be there. But if there ever was, I said, write a book on all the different experiences. I said, you you, <laughs> you would make absolutely millions because she's got so many stories from where she's had to pick me up and really, um, you know, help me in life. And, um, yeah, so she, 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 she's she been really good for me. Um, you know, she, she had my back and helped me get support and really helped me work on myself to be better and, and, and that, and, you know, that happened – over a long period of time. Maybe she should write a book uh, anyway and just the main character <laughs> be called Toll Johnson. <laughs> be like, who's this? Toll. Jeez, a bit mad, this Toll. Jeez. Jesus. Forever on Bender's Toll. Tolly Johnson. <laughs> Tolly, there you go. Man, that's that's yeah, how you toll. do it. Look out there, listen. There's going to be a book coming out, Tolly Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> He's been bending it. Oh, yeah, mate, it's, it's a bit boring. This boy, just basically, <laughs> yeah. just every chapter, he's just bending them. <laughs> but anyway, so she, yeah. she came through that period, man. All so wild and out of control. And I look back, I'm like, wow, did that happen? And she stuck by me in a different way. And even when I signed the the, the dragons, and yes, yeah, absolutely, just rock solid and mm. just had my back. And I needed someone in my life like that. If it's okay, yeah. Um, can you talk us through what it's like to, to have that initial consultation with the with the doctor? Did you go through mm. um, the club, or did you did you go no. uh, uh, because there can be a little bit of, and it's wrong to think this. Yeah, but think I don't want the club to know. Yeah, yeah, that's and obviously right. the the club doctors have patient. They sign a, yeah. an oath yeah. where they, they've got confidentiality, but still, still you know you're that, thinking. Yeah, if they, they say anything, this lot of pressure uh, anyway. 
Uh, That's like right. If they say something, I'm I, I could lose my or not lose my contract, but like it could yeah. affect my opportunities. Yeah, moving of course. Forward. You, you want to keep your career. You want to still have that image of like the coach can trust you to be mm. out there, be resilient. You're not gonna have all these other different things going on, and you know all that. Obviously, that crossed my mind, but I got my help to speak to a counselor through her work. Actually, she worked in a government organization, and she lined up um, the counselor through that, and, and you know I went in there. And it was tough for me to open up and speak, obviously it, it was, but I did and I just opened up like, I, you know, just really it was an emotional first time speaking about stuff but it just needed to be spoken about and it, it really, looking back, it's an, I love these moments, but it's one of those moments, right, where it just did save me in a way and, and change the direction in a, in a big way. You know, I, I got some advice, you know, about you know my story is quite unique it, it's quite it's quite powerful but you know what am i doing with that are you just holding it to yourself or are you actually going out to help others you know you know help them to be better so that's where i sort of wanted to get involved in the community because before that i wasn't really getting involved in the community at all but i knew that i could have an impact that made me in a in a way it made me feel like i was doing more than just holding on to whatever happened and and just letting it I was there to then help others to to be better and and uh, and so I get, got involved in the community and and I've, it's been a big part of my life since then. Yeah, you know what, mate, it, mm. as well, it, it's so important that people like you mm. do tell stories because yeah. um, a lot of people when they're facing these challenges, yeah, they can't ever envisage. Um, a positive outcome yeah so they get fixated on the fact that this is me now this is me forever well that's right if you doctors want to help and if you're willing to go and seek that help mm. then yeah you're in a shit shit show now or yeah. different shouldn't say shit like a difficult yeah. moment yeah or a difficult period of time and yeah just that's things right. like things just you can't see the wood for the trees and there's no light at the end that, of the tunnel that's but right you and you know we obviously we want positive role models but yeah. i think as a society we need to be careful about um like putting on a pedestal these people that have never done wrong yeah. because most people will yeah of course i see young people like you tell me a youngster yeah. that's not not made a mistake yeah but you know like obviously we have a, 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 a we're law abiding citizens but things can be shit but they'll mm definitely get better they definitely can get, get better, better yes. and it's, there's no silver bullet but no. there's a first step on the journey and yep. that is going to see yeah professional help and that, and that is so true and, and everyone's unique everyone's got their own experiences everyone's got their own inner strength everyone we're, we're, we're unique and that's what makes it you know so special and in and, and that way but you know things that work for certain individuals don't work for others you know it's it's just important that you're aware of how you feel, but you can feel better. You can do stuff to make you so, and you deserve that. Like every single person listening right now, you deserve to be happy. You deserve to do chase down whatever dreams you've got there, and, and to do that. And you know, sometimes you know, doubt and you know, all this other stuff holds people back. And you know, it, it's really important to have these healthy conversations to make people know that that's okay. It's okay, you know, to feel that way, but you deserve to get the help to, to live the, the life that that's there for you yeah was it was it difficult mm. um for you to leave that structure behind in canberra obviously yeah. you you was you what yeah. was your is amy from there or yeah, she, yeah. so she's from there yeah. you've got your yeah you know that close and knit community yeah. moved to wollongong or yeah. to sydney to be with the dragons that must have been yeah it was it like was tough quite eh? the upheaval yeah well <laughs> It was tough in a big way because um, we left a lot of our support behind. Um, but at the time, I, I won't dive into it at the moment because I've just repaired a relationship with my mum, you know, after a, a lot of years. But Good. at the time, you know, it, it was better for me just to to, to move away um, because of certain circumstances. But, you know, I've reconnected with my mum and, you know, I've always loved my mum and, you know, everything else. But... For me at that time, it was for me to be better to be away from from uh, Canberra anyway, without going too far into mm -hmm. it. But we went to, to Dragons and 
uh, under pricey, um, bit of a coach killer I am because you know I left when Fernsey got sacked, absolute legend, and I went to the the Dragons and Pryor Pricey was, was let go. So I was I'll, I've come from club to club through not being successful, right down the bottom and 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 bat, battling. Um, but I went to the Dragons and you know again I was out of control at times, like pretty wild in different ways, you know and. Um, you know, there again, I was going in this roller coaster of, I'm doing pretty good here. I'm off the drink. I'm, um, yeah, I'm playing all right footy. I'm, you know, whatever. And then it would creep up on me, and then next minute, I'm, I'm my life's out of control, and um, you know, and you know, I was lost or didn't know what was happening. And um, but there, I w- again went and got professional help. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if I say his name. At the time, um, Benny Cray, um, Ginge, absolute legend fella. He was working as a well-being um, officer there at the Dragons at the time and he really helped me to then go and get some professional help again um, and to just to, to silence these demons and, and to really, um, yeah, just just try and you know get my life back on track and, and to work through it all. And so... I did that and, you know, again, um, things would be going good then. You know, I, I was just, yeah, I guess it was just, you know, the 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 normal situation for me at, at that period where I, things would, you know, I'd just go off track and, and lose, lose my shit again. Um, but, you know, in saying that, the club, really good club, passionate club, you've been there. Mm. The fans were passionate. I really enjoyed it. Um, but yeah, it was just one of those periods again. I, I probably was I didn't get the best out of myself as a footballer because I just didn't have myself. I wasn't the happiest I, I probably should have been. Mm. You know, when you went to get um, mm. professional help, did yeah. you did you were you speaking to someone? Did or yeah. did you take the SSRIs as well? No, I, I went and spoke to a psychologist actually. You know, not just a counselor, psychologist and. Um, I've actually I got I got diagnosed with a mental illness at the time, um, type what? two bipolar. So while got, you were playing, yeah, while I was playing, and I look back and I still don't believe that diagnosed. I don't know if, if it was true because my my behaviour was still out of control. I don't know if I I you know because I, all the um, all the things led to that, and then you know they said I had you know and it was a very confusing period. And I was. I was just so lost and, and hurt. I really was, Jam. Like it was, it was tough for me um, at certain times at the Dragons for me, and you know, and you could see that in my football as well. Like you really could. You know, I was such a ro- I was just <laughs> like the rocks and diamonds. You know, some games I'd be just bulletproof, and you know, no one's stopping me, and and I'm I'm going hard. And other times I'd be like. I don't want to be here. <laughs> I, really? The last thing I want to be is out in this footy field, and yeah, you, know, you, you can see that in the way I sort of played because I was a very passionate, very. Could you? Aggressive. Could, yeah. C- could you stop that? No, like I don't know what it was. Like, was there any control? Was there any element of control? It was just like. No, it was just like my energy, like just wasn't there. My my mind was just elsewhere, and um, I guess that was just a big part of my career. I just didn't have that consistency. I didn't have because outside of football wasn't consistent. It wasn't, you know, I was always just a up and down. And well, for a um, lot of people, like the football field is is home. It's there. It's yeah. where they feel alive. Where they feel they belong. But yeah. for you, you like even yeah. like again that disparity between mm. ah and mm. Mm. yeah that's right and um, yeah that crazy that you'd enter crazy. an nrl field like in that state of mind that's, and that's right but you then you would put that fake energy on like that f- <laughs> that real fake energy and i used to do it all the time and and people back then would know what i'm talking about because it'd be people like uh gypsy uh jason nightingale or or frizz and all the different fellas you know it was a good bunch of lads there and you know, I'd always bring in like fake energy. Even though I wasn't feeling good, I'd pump a Red Bull in. I'd pump myself up. I'd be in there faking, yeah, singing, dancing in the weight room and, and carrying on. And um, and then out in the field, yeah, I'd have that fake energy of like, <laughs> it really was. And, but inside, fake I'm it like, till you make it. Fake it till you make it. And, but inside, I'm like, fuck, I want to get out of here. <laughs> and um, 
I guess, yeah, it reflected my performances. Again, it all come back to where my mindset and where my head was at. I was still hurt. I still, as much as yeah. I went and got help, it wasn't enough. It really wasn't. Um, so it's been a, a really long journey of just, you know, for that period of my football career it was just, a, I guess what maybe I could have been better in different ways if I wasn't in that environment. But the thing, as you know, Jim, like the environment of rugby league, the pressure, the ups and downs of your wins, your losses, the culture of drinking and, and doing other stuff, the party and all of the other stuff, it's a recipe not to help you be mentally healthy and fit and, and thriving. It, it actually, if you don't have things in place and you're not aware of it, it, it'll send you the opposite way. And it, can, it has it a can, potential to It has a potential, yeah. it does. And it, 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 can, it, can, it, it has the potential to do so much good but it can also have the potential yeah. in the wrong hands at the wrong, wrong times wrong to be yeah that's right so yeah. that's that that period that that probably was a, that's the best way to describe that so um but in all of that like it's all those experiences it's all of that stuff and you know with all of that going on i still you know i sort of contradict myself and it's and it's true because I'd go out and I'd do talks about a lot of this stuff about doing the right thing and, and all this other stuff. But on the other side, I was still heard enough where I was still doing the wrong thing and, and, and the stuff that I'm trying to preach to say to others not to do, you know, which is, it is contradicting. And I was a bit of a bit of a fake in, fake way, you know, you know, and what I was yeah, doing. Yeah, do as I say, not yeah, as I do. But, but the thing, thing was, you know, for me, you know, I'd go out in the mad bend to do the wrong thing, whatever, um, to make me feel good, I'd be like, no, I'm, I'm going to go back to the community. And I'd be like, all right, I'm good to go again. Like, come again. I'm, I'm right. You know, I'd, like somehow I'd very twisted in the way I thought, but it sort of set me a bit of a reset. I'm, even, I'm right now. You know, I've done the good oh, thing. Oh, no. And, and yeah. The, so you balance the scales balance where it's it. like, I've done, I'm, 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 oh, I know what will fix me. Yeah. I'm back. I'm back. I'm good to go. Yeah. And, and that's a terrible way to look at it. I don't know why. <laughs> I did it, but um, that was that period of time, yeah. Yeah, yeah. wow. Um, one of those events. Yeah. It was 2019. Yeah, yeah. It was, yeah. You, you'd put the post on social media. Yeah, yeah. Just, can you talk about your recollections? <sighs> yeah, so leading up to it, and I actually haven't spoken about this publicly, um, I wasn't in a good way leading up to that event where um, we'll get to, but um, Mad Monday, the Manly Mad Monday, I won't mention their names, but, you know, players at the Mad Monday, one of the players, he, I, I might have been just out of control. They're like, mate, no one wants you you're too much or something like that. I can't remember exact words. So I was thinking, you know, they've all turned to me, they'll hate me. So already in my head was, I was, my behaviour leading up to it, my, my wife had, concerns about me just the way i was behaving the way i was drinking everything like that and um so that mad monday you know um champion followers like you know champion guy that i had this clash but i had this thing in my mind like nah you know he's got something against me i, I want to sort of <laughs> absolute goose but anyway from that i had another weekend back in canberra i got a um invited to go to some event to be a speaker um and anyway i got on the drink and and partied and, and carried on and I, I, I went well I was, I was loose I was out of control and um and then my wife's like Joe I've got, I'm worrying about you. you you need to you need to really start to take care of yourself it's it, you're not heading in a good direction and, and she could see the signs and obviously um that led me to another weekend um it was the Aboriginal knockout actually in um the central coast and um, yeah, I, I was there and I was still recovering from um, an injury at the time and um, yeah, I got on the drink and I was meant to go home but I, I didn't go home. I, I, my wife was like, oh, I want you to come home. I'm worried about you. I know this is not good. Like, please get home where you're safe and we're living at Manly at the time or that area and um, no, I didn't. I went and, and went and drank and drank with friends actually and, and people that I trust and went to a house, got on the drink for, you know, a couple of days there. And I was just out of control. I, I was just really, it was like a, like a bit of psychosis where I was like, um, like I was hearing voices. I was just thinking that my lifetime 
you know friends people that i love and i love now and um were talking about me like this my mind was just playing these 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 tricks on me i guess in a way um yeah lost my mind a little bit and got asked like they said oh you need to get in a taxi and go back to sydney and um you know ought to kick me out too and then obviously got the taxi um you know got told to leave you know which is you know they said just just go jump in a cab go home to your wife and family um taxi driver turned up uh, in that meantime of you can see there um a big red mark um yeah hit my head on something and just bled out like just done some damage there and the taxi driver turned up, couldn't find me. Um, he stayed, obviously, he wanted his fare to get from there. It's a big fare, right, from the central coast of Manly. He wanted that money. Oh, so you, so you back in Manly at this point? No. Oh, sorry, I must have skipped that. So I'm still at this house party. I've been asked to leave, but I was meant to jump in the cab. But yeah. in that time before the cab driver could grab me, I've hit my head there on, yeah. on, on an object and um, I was on the ground knocked out like, out um bleeding out um the taxi driver pulled up looking for me wasn't there raised the concerns everyone searched for me my friends uh they found me in a pile of blood um they then got the ambulance there and then they flew me straight from there um they put me in a coma uh flew me straight to sydney uh to the brain ward and then yeah i I was in this uh, induced coma and because of the swelling on my brain and the damage I done, um, you know they didn't know what the outcome was going to be out of that. So when I come out of it, could I speak again? Was I going to be a veg block? That that was just obviously where I hit. And I hit pretty hard. Um, yeah, come out and you know there's, <laughs> I shouldn't laugh about, it, but there's obviously bright lights in the hospital. And I woke up and it was like my first words like, "Is this heaven?" <laughs> and, and, and um yeah obviously it wasn't heaven it was hospital <laughs> uh, um yes yeah, so i was in there for weeks um in the brain ward doing all the tests recovering and uh, again it was a big you know having your children run up to you in the hospital bed in absolute uh, I, could, I could get emotional thinking about it you know running up to mm. you know bed in tears and and seeing my wife crying and just from my from from my behaviour and me not you know put myself in that situation and end up where I sh- probably should have lost my life from what I you know you know very close to losing my life or having the damage there um, yeah it, it was a big wake up call you know from there um, yeah got out of the <laughs> got out. I can say this. My wife knows this story, and maybe some friends. But I couldn't get out of the, the the ward because you had to do this certain brain test where you had to they give you like a list of things and you had to write down. You had to remember them and and write them down. And I couldn't get it. Eh? And I'm like, I've got to get out of here. I want to. I've got to get out of here. I want to get out of here. I actually went up to the um, where the nurses sit at their desk and that, and and quickly like went over the table and like asked something stupid and. The, little house I come out of me a young fella just went over and grabbed the pencil off the thing and so I could write down the, the things I remember the test and, and that's the way I got out of it hopefully I didn't come and grab me and put me back in there but I got out of there and um yeah got out of the the brain ward um and then made a promise to my wife that um obviously for her to, to keep the marriage to keep the marriage and keep my family you know I had to give up a year without drinking um but the, the 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 thing from all of that that added to you know someone that was a big part of my life um Dima who helped raise me it was a big influence on on who I am and will always was my biggest supporter um he only had so long to live um oh far out um you know he was in Wagga and he was in hospital there and I I had to rush from, lucky I got out of the thing, I had to rush from Sydney to get down there to see him before he passed away. Now I missed that. You know, I went in there and he passed away just before and I went in there and held his hand and, you know, he, he was a big part of my life and, you know, it, it sort of added to that situation where I nearly did, you know, lose my life from my behaviour, put myself in that situation, but not to give, a, say, a goodbye to someone that meant so much to me it really did hurt me in a big way and you know it's something i'll never forget or forgive myself in a way for 
um, which is disappointing. But um, but uh, yeah, so all that period, it was just a yeah, absolutely crazy. Yeah, just everything that happened in in the build up. Yeah, my behaviour and leading up to it, and um, yeah, it was it was definitely a, that wake up call that I needed in life. Yeah, sometimes um, people need that rock bottom yeah moment. To yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, they need to go through that to yeah. um, be the catalyst for change, which it's clear. Um, speaking to you today, you, you have been. Mm. Cause, um, and many just continue on that path and some right. would exit that situation and go, well, yeah. I'm alive, so I'm six yeah, again. Let's We're, go. Let's, yeah, crack let's on. go again. Yeah, yeah no. Um, so you credit to yourself. Uh, no, that... Oh, it's just oh, get them. Oh, it just makes me reflecting back because I don't think back to that moment too much in my life, mm. obviously. But you know, thinking about you know not having the the say goodbye that I called him dim and um, someone that was very close to me and just all of that. But I guess that moment has has changed me in a big big way in life. You know, do I still drink? Yes, I, of course I drink. Do I sometimes drink too much? Yes, of course. But I never get to a situation where I put myself in where I where I lose absolute control of who I am where I am where I'm just you know I'll never ever ever put myself there um because it's just too dangerous because that experience really did give me that you know that understanding that what I need to do yeah I think um a, a lot of um people can relate to that and I yeah. think it um <clears throat> I think it comes down to you controlling it, it not controlling you. Yeah, and that's a good way to say it too. Like, I, I'm, I'm in control here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all know. Yeah, that's right. And that's right. And tend to shit when <laughs> when it's controlling you. Yeah, that's right. And I guess from that that time, um, you know, anyone that's listening or ever anyone that comes close to, you know, not being around or, or having a serious accent or anything like that a, a change of obviously is going to change you forever and and the way you look at things and what it does do but it makes you realize who your people are like who who is your people that really love and 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 have your back no matter what and that and that really exposed that for me as well like you know i'm very lucky i've got some really good friends and and some and some loving you know family and all that you know i'm i am blessed in a way and sometimes you, you don't think about them as much when you're just going through life. You, but, you know, that really showed, you know, that they've got my back no matter what and they're there for me, you know, and, and that's what it did for me as well. Yeah, we can sleepwalk. We were all guilty of sleepwalking through life at yeah, times, man. Yeah, and yeah, for sure. Not waking up to mm. what or who's important. Yeah. Um, mate, you are a very proud Indigenous man yeah. uh, as well. You speak about playing yeah. in the... Um, Aboriginal knockout mm. competitions. Um, can you tell us a little bit about um, your work in the uh, indigenous community and yep. what um, what people can can do to to help contribute? You know, I think um, I yeah. spoke with um, uh, Shane Richardson, who's oh, yeah. um, one of the uh, who's heavily involved in Greg Inglis's Goanna Academy, oh, yeah. and some of the yeah. statistics around um, yeah, you know the the disparity. Be between yeah. indigenous and non-indigenous yeah. people is is um is crazy disgraceful it is disgraceful it's like it it is is, it's it's a, it, it's embarrassing and it, it is it is and, it, and that's what we need more allies we need more people that have that empathy and that understanding and it is quite complex um but the more people in our corner and the more people fighting for the right thing and the right reason to to really them statistics just uh, make you actually feel sick it's when okay. you see it's terrible. And, you know, you look at the population of Indigenous Australians in, in Australia, right, such a small percentage, but we make up, you know, 50, 60% of the juvenile justice centre or the out-of-home care kids, you know. It, it's, it's so wrong and we've got a massive fight, but we need more people in our corner and, and fight for the, for, for the right reasons. And, um, you know, me, again, going back to... Growing up um, in in the community and um, you know being fair skin, you know I had to fight for everything. You know I, you know I still remember um, playing up at the local oval and against my own cousins. We'd have <laughs> I don't even know if I should say this out, let's say, <laughs> but I will. 
Uh, I used to have like whites versus blacks in, in, in the game of footy and I used to get, my cousins used to actually put me on the white fella's side <laughs> and I'd play and I'd be like, well, I'm, I'm a black fella. Like, no, you're the white, you got to steal that, you got to play against that. But anyway, um, you know, growing up for real experiences, I got to learn a lot about my nan and, you know, what the fights that she had to go through. I'm very proud of my grandmother. Someone who's never drank, never smoked, worked so hard her whole life and has got a massive heart. She helps no matter, helps everyone and she was someone I really look up to. Now you talk about role models and people say sporting people and all. I look at my grandmother as someone that come through a period of where racism, you know, racism still out there, unfortunately, but it comes through a really tough period. But um, someone I look up to as, as, as someone um, I want my girls to grow up to and look up to and aspire to be. And, um, you know, from that I, I was very proud because I seen all the different challenges and experiences and all the different things, you know. And instance, you go to the local um, shop and, um, you know, going in and to, to buy something and um, I'd be able to walk out but my cousins because of their skin colour would be pulled up. You know, that's the reality of what's out there. People don't see this but the discrimination, how does that make people feel? Obviously you feel isolated, you feel like you are not part of, you know, the wider society and because why, because of a skin colour, why should they be pulled up out of, you know, and it's, it's all those little things. It's quite complex and but at the end of the day, we need people to understand our history and, and, and being an ally and, and fighting with us and, and doing it, walking beside us and, and sometimes we see out there, we get quite divided. You know, the media can divide us. The media can play a certain narrative and, and divide us. It does. It does and it's quite... Uh, it's disappointing um, because it shouldn't be that way. It really shouldn't be that way. We should be coming together and and and, and having each other's backs. That's what Aussies. That's what people. That's what humans should be. No matter what. No matter what color you are. What background you are. We we should be there supporting each other. Absolutely. And, and um, sports a great vehicle for that. I think. No. Yeah. You know, I, I look back at my time at the Bulldogs yeah. in particular. Very. Um, diverse group of supporters mm. but when the bulldogs were going well um all people cared cared about in the stand was mm. if you were wearing blue and white they didn't care about um your ethnicity no. um sexual orientation no. your know, country of country of origin yeah. whatever it may be if you were in blue and white that's right. you were one of us we were cuddling together now that's on a small scale mm. in, in in canterbury I look at the example of the matildas recently oh. like to see a you you know i'm I didn't want the Matildas to do well. Like, I'm not going to be honest with you. I was made up when the Lionesses beat them. Like, that's me being me. But I, what, what it, my observations yeah. on a societal level yeah. were like, isn't it interesting that these people come together under the Matildas banner? Yeah. They're all united and we're, oh, we, we have a commonality. That's we right. Have a, we, we have something similar. We have something Same. in common here. That, that anger. We have that like, goal together. We, we, we all, we're all behind and, yeah. you know, the scenes in, in, in Melbourne, in Sydney, yeah. in, in, in Brisbane, the big cities all across Australia, people were there. They were united in yeah. the one front as That's a right. Matilda. Yeah. Now, if we can come together over something as stupid as a made-up game with made-up rules, yeah, 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 yeah. like soccer, yeah, yeah, you know, I think what you find is, is we're actually a lot more, we're, we're, we're a lot, um, we're a lot more similar than when we are different. And we are. sport is a great vehicle to and, do and that. And that's what makes society and I get quite deep here, I could, but that's what makes it special, right? People's different beliefs, different experiences, and different. But we've got to have that empathy understanding that respect for each other to to have that care and and want each other to be better want each other to, and to be supporters so you know if you're a business owner and you say you could give a job to a, a kid a, a little kid a kid that's an indigenous kid from a, like give that kid an opportunity but understand that his experiences he's you know he's come from different experiences from what you have he might have like a family member might pass away might be an uncle but out there it's a very community so we have so many different uncles and family it's all you know one so they need to go and have sorry business where they go and you know have a funeral and that could be different feel like having that understanding but respect it because that's their that's their culture and that's who they are just as we got to respect each other both ways but well um, i think it, uh, you, you know what you say there going yeah. both ways it does yeah like i there's so much about um different cultures that mm. i go like well wish wish my culture was a little bit mm. more like that mm. like oh that's actually 
that's way better than what I experienced growing up. <laughs> like it's not just a one way street. No, 100%. But like you know, it's not ben, by, you know by. not understanding for all gain. Yeah. It's like, oh, well, hang on, like mm. there's something there's something to be mm. said in that yeah. in that way of doing things and 100%. and the. I remember um, listening to an elder speak mm. and talk about, you know, how we should be grateful to Mother, Mother Earth, mm. and, like, just touching the leaves. Mm. And I was like, cool. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we yeah we should. Yeah, we should. So mm. now, like, that's part of the daily routine. Yeah. It's outside every day. That, yeah. Thanks. It's beautiful. Yeah, how good. I love that. <laughs> that, actually, that, that, that. And that's cool. And that's what... We all we got to learn off each other, but like it's so, and it's not about me respecting mm. or 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 not taking the piss out no. of the culture's doing. No. It's going, hang on a minute, I, I might do that. Yeah, there's something in that. Yeah, no, definitely. And you know, exp and we get to live in the in the in the beautiful where we get the experience, especially Australia, such so a d diverse sort of country and different foods, different cultures. You learn so many different stuff, and and it's a, it's a beautiful thing, right? And, and um, I guess being who I am and, and very proud to be from the community, very proud of my heritage, very proud of everything about me. And um, for me to be that proud, I want to make sure I'm putting my hand down there, helping up my brothers and sisters to chase down and dream big and chase and go hard and, and to go after that. And um, that's that's been a big part of, my, it was a big part of my career and it's going to be a big part of my life forever. And it's something that means so much to me and um, it always will be. And it's just important that we just keep on building our allies and, and the right people will want that as well. Well, mate, I can see your passion in yeah. in your in your body language, mm. in your voice. You're very yeah. you like your conviction when you speak about yeah. it. It's, yeah. um, it, re it, it it if it comes through, so oh. no doubt you'll be championing that for a very long time. Uh, we've got four questions yeah. or four elements that we, yeah. we like to ask each and every guest. Uh, First one is the dream spine. Yeah. Uh, so there's no real rules or regulations to this, I guess. Um, oh, it's so tough. Can, man, so much. It is. You got to leave some people out. I know it's hard to leave them out too. Um, oh, I'll have to go. Greg Inglis at, at fullback. It's just a big. He's beast. a very uh, common choice. Is he? Believe it or not, yes. Um, well, I'm just going to go with the ones that most will probably say to um, Cameron Smith. Yeah, yeah. Did you play? Did you play with him at all? Played no, against I did. Him played against time, him, yeah. but obviously, just was such a professional, and the way the game went, um, you know, he was, he was, um, yeah, he was, he was tough. And again, it's just going to be <laughs> JT. Obviously, you played with them all stars. Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, he was champion. Um, and then a lot of indigenous fellas in this side. And then uh, Cliffy Lyons. I like Cliffy because yeah. he was just an absolute. I thought uh, you, you know, I was I was worried about your six. <laughs> well, yeah. you want to say Gaz Widow? <laughs> oh, Gaz Widow, what a legend! <laughs> oh, Widow, what a man! Of what a man! Yeah, uh, what a man! I'm glad you didn't say him. <laughs> that's uh, that's a first bind though. Yeah, GI Lions, yeah. JT and Smith. Yeah. All right. Um, if footy didn't exist, what do you think you'd be doing? Probably jail. No, jail. Um, no, no. Mate, well, you know what? It's <laughs> yeah, what? If footy didn't exist, it would be scary where I'd be because footy was a big part of my life to change the direction as in it, it changed in I had to behave at the school. I had to so I can go and train and I had to play and it really did change me in a big way and I'd, I'd hate to think... Yeah, where I'd be. Mate, your that, story's not unique in uh, that factor. Yeah, so I don't know. Like it could, it, it, it could have been, a, <laughs> it could have definitely led down to that world. Well, mate, think about this as an impressionable teenager. Like I'm sure, like I can think about my, can I speak about myself, my own mm. experiences, but like I flirted with some things. Mm. But I had football just to steer me, yeah, and it was right. always at the forefront of my mind mm. on every decision that I made. Yeah. It also probably made me less interested in mm. academia. But it, but in terms of like just knobbing around on the mm. streets, it's like ah <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah yeah no nah. uh, yeah uh, I guess um, yeah I wouldn't be in a yeah I I dare say. Without football, without rugby league, 
I definitely would have been in. Um, I would have. I would have been in some trouble. I dare say. Yeah. Definitely. I. I, I need rugby league saved me in every way, and that's why it's important now to give back in in a way because it, it did do a lot for me, mm. and it does so much for so for many, many, not just individuals, but communities and societies in general. De- definitely. Um, I, uh, I know our game comes with an element an element of danger and yeah. risk, but I don't think that that is necessarily a bad thing. No. Um, and I don't like seeing it slam because I know that the difference it makes in a lot of young men's lives, especially, but now young girls as well. A hundred percent. And then again, to touch on some of the work that, and people are not across that, some of the listeners wouldn't, but the NRL community team and, and what they do, they go out there, provide you know, mental health, wellbeing workshops for their state of mind stuff. And the impact and starting those very healthy conversations for some of these kids Man, it, it, it changes lives. It saves lives. It has such a big impact. So, um, you know, rugby league. I love rugby league. It's a beautiful game, but but it's a really community game. It's about everyone. It's very diverse. No matter your background, you know, whatever you you are in that game, we love you and you love the game, and, and that's what makes it so special. And for a lot of these community clubs, mm. it, it's a lot of young people's only home. Yeah, that's right. It's a breakaway. That's definitely right. It's a release. It yep. provides so much. And not to get these kids playing in the NRL or the mm. NRLW either. Mm. It's to make them better people. That's it's right. phenomenal what they do. Yep. Um, the most interesting person that you've met along the way? In footy? Anywhere you like, mate. Oh, do you No I've rules met, I've on met it. some absolute crackers and um, <laughs> I've met some, some, yeah, some people in my time. Um, interesting people. Um, oh, far out. I, I couldn't. I don't know. There's just so many different mix of people. Eh? I don't know. It's it's a tough one. It really is. I can't even give you an answer. All right, no worries. Well, okay. we just say Jeremy Lattimore. We'll let, no, we'll actually, edit, we'll I, I reckon edit probably this. Jeremy Lattimore is probably the most interesting person for so many different reasons. Um, yeah, he's a quite a unique human in. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't throw him under the bus too much because I need his reputation held up because he's doing a bit <laughs> doing some connecting with me at the moment. <laughs> so. you're, you're a very lucky man, Jeremy. <laughs> but it's get not, me back because yeah, if yeah. none of this opportunities come to anything, I want to come in here and have a, another session yeah, just purely blow, on, on lats. Blow his legs off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a sliding doors moment that you think about the alternative or if the alternative had happened. So uh, for me, it's arguably a one thing one of those i think about is uh, if it had stayed in england like what life yeah. would have been like yeah i i shared a few before and I'll, I'll repeat them again but definitely my nan taking me in and, and raising me um meeting my wife i dare say any other girl at that period that come in and they would have ran like pretty early on through my behavior and what i was like no one would have handled me so and and then my head injury it definitely was a big wake-up call that I was going to lose my life and if my behavior kept on continuing down that way that it was going and um yeah so those different moments definitely has made me who I am right now a very happy a very healthy a very love and life in every way person but um all those different little moments got to where I am right now speaking to you all right well Joel thank you so much um uh, for coming on the buy round I really appreciate you um sharing your story going some very uh very personal yeah uh touch to it some some tragedy mm-hmm. uh, and some triumph as well and um i genuinely wish you all the best in your endeavors with with what you you're creating there mm-hmm. and the impact that you can have and um your ability to to story tell and to share that story yeah. is going to be so important and um, there's a lot of uh, young boys and young girls and, and even people in adulthood as yep. well that could, could learn a lot and if they're listening to this, we'll take a lot from it as well. So uh, thank you so very much, mate. No, thank you for having me. Cheers. Thanks, mate.